Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we'll be discussing how to administer the Deep Neck Flexor Endurance Test. As the name suggests, this test obviously measures the endurance of the Deep Neck Flexor Muscle Group, which we've talked about in previous videos. Now, this muscle group can become weak due to a number of reasons, including, but not limited to, prolonged upper cross posturing with rounded shoulders, forward head positioning, right? Also, any kind of trauma to the head or the neck. So this would be common in contact sports like boxing or football, and even motor vehicle accidents are extremely common. And so if you suspect that a patient has weakness in their deep neck flexors, or they have a mechanism of injury that's consistent with something like what I just mentioned, then you might consider administering this test. And so to do that, the patient is going to be positioned in supine like you see right here. Now the technique involves a chin tuck like you see right here. Also the occiput, the back of the skull, needs to come off of the table about 2.5 centimeters, which amounts to about one inch. Now the PT can passively move their head into this position, after which they'll let go and the patient's going to have to maintain that position, or what you see in this video, what I'm doing, I'm actively moving into the position and then just holding it. The second case is actually more common, but you can also do the first case. Okay? Now, the chin tuck that you see right there is using active contraction of the deep neck flexors. So holding this position is a good way to measure their endurance. Now this is an endurance test, so we have to time it. And the time begins as soon as the correct position is achieved. So the correct position being the chin tuck and then the occiput coming off of the table. So let's take a look at that right now. So there's the chin tuck, occiput comes off and I begin the time. And you can use a stopwatch obviously, you can use the app on your phone, doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to turn the time off as soon as I come out of that position in any way. And the termination criteria we'll talk about in just a minute. So my head comes back there, and that's when I stop the time. Okay. So once I come back to this position, and there's a couple other things to look out for as well, that's when I stop the time. And you look at the time down here, and it was basically 18 seconds. You're then going to take this time and compare it to this normative data right here. And this data was obtained from healthy, normal individuals with no perceivable problem in their deep neck flexors. For women, their average time to hold this is about 29 seconds. For men, it's about 38 seconds. So considering my time here, just in the video, was 18 seconds, that's 20 seconds less than the average. And so that might mean that I have weakness in my deep neck flexors, and I may want to con uh, consider strengthening them. Understand that it is not uncommon for people following a motor vehicle accident or other trauma to only be able to hold this about 5 to 10 seconds. Uh, that's because the trauma significantly weakens those deep neck flexors. Also, if a patient's able to get beyond these normative data points, uh, it doesn't really benefit to have them hold much longer. So if you have a guy who gets to about 40 seconds, you can pretty much terminate the test right there because that indicates that they don't have weakness and there's really no benefit of going beyond that. Same thing for women. If they get beyond about 30, 31 seconds, also doesn't benefit them beyond that. Their deep neck flexors are normal. Now, what was my clue to terminate this test? Well, there's a couple important criteria here. And the first one's the less obvious one, and that's excessive substitution by other muscles. We are trying to measure endurance of the deep neck flexor muscle group, but there's other muscles that can excessively substitute, like the sternocleidomastoid, SCM. There's some others like platysma and hyoid muscles. We're not as concerned about those. The major one is really the sternocleidomastoid. And understand that you are not going to be able to completely turn off the SCM. You're always going to have some of it active with the deep neck flexors. Okay, You can't isolate the deep neck flexors completely. But when that sternocleidomastoid starts working over time, that's when you need to terminate the test. And how do you know that? Well, if you're palpating the sternocleidomastoid, if it gets excessively tight, indicating that it's starting to really kick in, that's when you terminate the test. More often than not, though, you're going to look at this visually. And the way that you'll recognize this is there's a decrease in chin length, which corresponds to the occiput rising up. So basically, you're getting excessive flexion of the neck. Let's take a look at that right here. So here's the correct positioning right here. Now watch what happens when I start to get excessive substitution by the sternocleidomastoid. 
I get a little excessive neck flexion. Now, in reality, it may not occur that quickly. Okay, It may be a lot more subtle and slow, but I'm exaggerating it here so you can see it. So you see that excessive neck flexion there before I put the neck down. That's because I'm running out of gas, so to speak, in my deep neck flexors, and so the only way I can maintain that position is by kicking in the sternocleidomastoid. If you see that excessive neck flexion, which may manifest by a decrease in chin length right there, decrease in chin length, or the occiput rising up even more beyond its normal height, that's when you know to terminate the test. Another way you know to terminate the test is a little more obvious, and it's inability to maintain the position. That's what we saw in the original video where I was demonstrating how to do the test. So inability to maintain the position, uh, basically the occiput drops back to the table. Okay, So you can obviously see that right here. My deep neck flexors are not sufficient enough in strength, and so I'm unable to hold that position any longer. Now, when most people conduct this test, they're usually just looking for the occiput to start to drop back to the table, and that's fine. But another way you can be really rigorous with this is you can put your hand on the table underneath the head, or really just a finger, that's all it really needs to be. And really, the head shouldn't be in contact with your finger. Maybe the hair is, but the actual hard part of the head is not. And so, basically, as they're doing this test, if the occiput, not the hair, if the actual hard part of the head maintains contact with your finger or hand for at least one second, you also know to terminate the test. The hair might be in contact with your finger, but if the head comes down any more and maintains contact with your finger underneath here for at least one second, that means that the chin tuck was not maintained enough and you also terminate the test right there. Okay. So hopefully this video gives you a good understanding of how to conduct the deep neck flexor endurance test. If you have weakness of these muscles, you might consider strengthening these, which we cover in a separate video. So make sure to check that out. Thanks for tuning in. Please like, subscribe, and check out my Instagram for cool science and not science stuff.